Hi, I am Pastor Richard Warnicke from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, and welcome to our Thursday devotion. If there is one passage that I, as an outreach pastor, have often used working with people who may or may not know Jesus the way you and I do, it's Acts chapter 4, verse 12. These are the words of Peter. He says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. A statement that teaches us there's no other name. The only one who is our Savior, who came to this world to live, die, and rise again so that we could have access to God. Now, the context of this passage is important. Peter and John had helped a lame beggar. They healed him, a man who was 40 years old. So now they were being held accountable by the leaders of the church body, the leaders of the Sanhedrin. And they called Peter and John in, and they were cross-examining them. They asked, by whose authority did you do this? Not even mentioning what they did. It was too far beneath them. So with that lame beggar at their side, who was dancing around in his freedom now, they said what? Well, listen to what Peter writes in Acts chapter 4, verses 8 through 11. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. It's Peter who reminds them that it's by the name of Jesus, whom they had crucified, many of whom had been there at the courtroom when they condemned Jesus to death. He's alive, and it's his name that gives us the authority and the power to heal, not just physically, but spiritually. The Sanhedrin was at a loss. What were they to do to these men? They just wanted to get rid of them, kill them. But there was no way because there were so many people that saw the act of kindness that they had done to this 40-year-old lame beggar that if they would have hurt Peter and John, they would have been tremendously upset with the Sanhedrin. So they let Peter and John go, but not before they told him, do not be using the name of Jesus in your preaching. Well, you can imagine how Peter reacted to that. But a little bit later, it was Peter that offered a prayer to God. A prayer that was very insightful. It's in Acts chapter 4 yet, and he says in verse 29, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Peter knew that these men in the Sanhedrin were out to get him, to kill him, to get rid of him. But he didn't pray, Lord, protect us. Instead, he prays, Lord, you know what's in their hearts. Give us the boldness to proclaim your name. In my Bible information class, my 201 series, I have a lesson on prayer. And I teach the students there are many different kinds of prayer. There are are prayers of praise, prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of petition, prayers for yourself, and prayers for intercession, prayers for other people. But I also teach them on the basis of what Peter pre teaches here, or prays, I teach them that it's also important to pray boldly or dangerously. Because when you pray for someone else, which is awesome, but then ask God to use you to help that someone else, it's dangerous in that you know God's going to open a door and use you. And that's exactly what Peter is praying. Lord, no matter how people feel against me, no matter how dangerous a situation I might be in, give me the boldness to do but one thing, to proclaim your name. 
in an age when there are a number of people asking us to hold other people's names on high, to rally around them, God teaches us to hold but one name up and rally around it so that those who may not know it may rejoice in it and live. Lord, give us the courage to proclaim your name, the only name that saves. We pray, Lord, thank you for sending Jesus into this world who came to save us. And thank you for giving us the boldness to proclaim the only name that saves so that others, even if they hate Christ, may learn of him and live. Use us to that end, Lord. Amen. Until next time.